a lot of people needed to ask themselves how am I actually going to go about um, setting up my life in a different way now that all these kind of external influencers are playing a role while as long as everything is the same as we expect we're basically not paying attention to it so our sensory system is out there but there's so much information it's not just what's on the internet but if you were to ask yourself all the things that your body and your brain has to manage and either bring to your attention or not bring to your attention and there are certain things that we never really think about. Disciplined way over and over and over and over, and it becomes a routine. You're also training your brain to start looking for things and be sensitive to things that are worth being grateful for. Welcome to the Ideal Wealth Grower YouTube channel. My name is Axel Meyerhofer. I'm the founder and today's host of the episode on our channel. And as we're coming closer to the end of the year and I have had the privilege to be on a whole bunch of different uh, podcasts, I'm really grateful for being invited and having the opportunity to talk about Ideal Wealth Grower and what we do and how we suggest for people to invest and so forth. But one of the things that I felt was probably a topic that I didn't really necessarily anticipate, but several of the hosts asked, and so I thought we should maybe make a video about it. And that has to do with how do we on the one hand get ourselves in the right mindset, but it is a little bit more in the direction of how do we train ourselves. And so one thing that I have actually been doing myself for quite some time, and I would like to recommend for people to do, is to use something like here you can see this is the um, five minute journal there's uh, other similar ones called the gratitude journal and other um, formats the main point about it is that in the beginning when you say i want to change something and i'm not talking about new year's resolutions i'm talking more in the context of you want to actually accomplish something especially this year when we had so many different things and a lot of people needed to ask themselves how am I actually going to go about um, setting up my life in a different way now that all these kind of external influencers are playing a role? Do I want to still live in the city or do I rather want to live somewhere outside? Do I want to still live in an apartment complex or should I really push to get my own house? Do I have maybe a nice place to live and I need to find some investments that bring stability and at some point allow me to get out of this so-called rat race that oftentimes is spoken about? So... How do you get yourself in certain habits? And one of the habits that I would like to encourage you to get into is to actually really keep a gratitude journal and to talk a little bit about what that is and what it does. Now, number one, what it is, is basically just a booklet and you can get these for just a few dollars uh, on Amazon or Google or so forth. And they are books where you basically have a page or two for each day and the process is to ask yourself at the beginning of the day, what am I gra uh, grateful for? And what am I trying to accomplish today? And then you go through your day and you do your thing and, and all those kind of activities that happen throughout the day. And at the end of the day, before you actually get ready for bed or go to bed, you go back to your journal and on the second page or on the second half of one page, it asks you, what did you accomplish today? And what are you grateful for now that the day is over? And you do this as a routine over and over and over again. And over time, for one, your body and especially your brain will become used to that kind of thought process. And two things will happen. Number one, as you do it regularly, and initially it's really a matter of being disciplined. You really need to kind of force yourself to do it. Because if it's something new, and this is not just true for the gratitude journal, this is something whenever you want to establish a new habit, for the first, I recommend three, four weeks, you really kind of need to force yourself. If you, for example, use reminders on your phone or you have some sort of like a Google calendar or another calendar, I would actually recommend to put reminders on your calendar in the morning and in the afternoon or evening to be reminded to do it. But as you keep doing it for the 10th, 15th, 20th, 30th time, you get used to it. So it becomes part of your routine. 
And in this context, part of your routine also means that your body and your brain expect it to happen. So if something interrupts your routine, like you get an unexpected phone call in the morning when you would normally fill it out, or something happens um, that takes you away from what you normally do, you might skip it, but you will feel something is missing. That is basically your body and your brain telling you, hey, you changed something in the routine and you should probably go back and fill it out. So that would be then a physical reminder to go back and actually right in the morning or the evening entry in your journal. Now, that's one thing, and that's the discipline, and that is a process. And you might ask yourself, so what do I actually get out of this? Now, number one, after a while, and especially when you get through phases, like I think in 2020, a lot of people went through phases where you're really asking yourself, is there anything good going on? And you can then go back to your gratitude journal and look at the things that you actually wrote in that you were grateful for because those are typically things that are good or that are at least on a good path. So that's one aspect. On the other hand, the second aspect is as you keep doing it, you can then at some point say, I have now a month of things that I can be grateful for. I have a quarter, I have a half a year, I have a whole year and maybe in the future, multiple years of things to be grateful for because you will have all these little booklets with all your gratefulness written in it. And there's always a difference between just telling yourself and actually writing it down. Now there is one other aspect and I find that is actually almost like the most beautiful part of the whole thing. And that has to do with how do we actually appreciate life around ourselves. And that aspect has to do with when you are looking at certain things in a certain way, you're training your brain to basically be sensitive to it. There is a term called the Ferrari effect. And yes, I mean the car. And the idea with the Ferrari effect is that it says if you have a strong desire to go after something like a Ferrari or some other fancy car that you would like to have, there is this phase while you're basically getting yourself ready to, to actually purchase the car or receive the car. And that is a more or less longer uh, period of time where you need to basically accumulate the money and then you wanna maybe do a test drive and then you wanna actually look at the car and you probably did all the research. This is the right car, this is the right trim, this is the right motorization, this is the color that you want, this is the um, rims that you want for it and so forth and so forth. So that big day at some point arrives where you're actually gonna go and get the keys and get the title and get all the paperwork and you get the car. And what's interesting is you have basically been training your brain to be excited about the car. And what will happen is as soon as you have the car and drive around it, and this is where this Ferrari effect comes in, your brain being now aware I'm in the car, in the actual car, not just a picture on the wall, but the actual car, it will point out to you and make you aware how many other cars like that are actually out there. And the Ferrari effect points out that there are many more of those cars around than you ever realize and recognize because you didn't really pay the same level of attention. Why is that? It has to do with the enormous amount of data and information that comes into our brain. So you may not know, but our brain is basically required to constantly analyze what we sense Right? We're sensing temperature, that's what our skin does. We're sensing, is there wind? We're sensing, uh, are we hot? Are we cold? We're sensing what we can see with our eyes. We're sensing what we can hear, even kind of like out of place noises pay, make us pay attention. While as long as everything is the same as we expect, we're basically not paying attention to it. So our sensory system is out there, but there's so much information. It's not just what's on the internet. But if you were to ask yourself all the things that your body and your brain has to manage and either bring to your attention or not bring to your attention. And there are certain things that we never really think about. Have you ever thought about who is telling your heart to beat at a certain rate? Who is telling your eyes to blink to keep your eyeballs wet? Who is telling your lungs to actually take a breath and in and out? Who is telling your ears to have those little tiny hairs to stand up so you can actually hear something and, and 
differentiate between the different tones and, and stuff like that and the level of noise. All of that is being happening with your brain. You're eating something, who is telling your stomach to actually digest it in a certain way? On and on and on and on. So there are a whole bunch of things that your body, by guidance from your brain, is doing on a regular basis and you're not consciously aware of it. And that same thing happens in your environment. When you go into a new environment, in a new area, or you go on vacation, you see a lot of things that you're not necessarily aware of where you live. Why? Because where you live, you have gotten used to it and your brain has decided that tree has always been there. That shrub has always been there. These stairs are always the same. So you can go up and down the stairs without really paying attention and don't hurt yourself. You do that in a new location that you haven't been there and you don't pay attention, you're probably going to stumble. Now the same thing, and why, why am I bringing this up? The same thing happens with the gratitude journal. What you're basically doing when you're filling out the gratitude journal in a disciplined way over and over and over and over, and it becomes a routine, you're also training your brain to start looking for things and be sensitive to things that are worth being grateful for. And so besides just at the end of the day to be quicker and quicker, easier and easier to be able to write in and maybe write more of all the things that were good during the day that, that just passed, your brain will also point out the things that you should be grateful for. And that changes, for example, one of the things is how you react in your communication to other people. So instead of just saying, oh yeah, thank you, or that was fine, you might actually change your speech to say, wow, I really appreciate that, or that was very nice of you, or I, I really didn't expect that you to do this and I want to thank you for that. So you will actually show your appreciation because you trained your brain. And the interesting thing is for one, you're getting wonderful responses back because people like to be told that you are grateful for what they did. Number two, you will appear in their perception as somebody who's really nice and friendly and, and, and people are happy to be around. Because if we have a choice, we like to be around people that are nice and grateful and, and happy and thankful. And so guess what happens? In your pursuit to actually accomplish your goals and realize your vision, and when we come back all the way to investing, to find the right property, to find the right uh, property management company, to find the right deal, to find the best way to invest your money, you will connect with the people that really appreciate the way you show up in the world. So you're not just filling out the gratitude journal for yourself, you're also filling it out for the future relationships that come out of the changed attitude that you will experience. So I would like to encourage you, especially as we're coming into the holiday season, it might be a little easier to do something on a regular basis in the morning and in the evening rather than during a busy workday. So you can train yourselves in the next three or four weeks while we're going through the holidays to do it. So by the time you start into the new year, you have already practiced it 10, 15, 20, 30 times. And then I want you to pay attention to how it actually changes your communication, how it changes how you interact with people. And this is not just in person, which is kind of tricky these days, but also when you're on like a Zoom call or WebEx call or Teams call or some sort of video conferencing or on the phone, how do you change your way of interacting with other people and how often do you make it a point to be grateful to what they say and how they treat you? And you will see your relationships get better you're achieving your goals faster, you will be able to find the better deals and you will ultimately be able to reach that point of economic independence we're always talking about sooner and with more happiness than you anticipated. So I hope you give it a try. Get one of those gratitude journals. They're really cheap. They're really easy to do. Or you can get them online for those of you who rather like to do it on their phone or laptop or tablet. You can do it on a digital level as well, but do it and see what happens. So with that being said, I hope you like this video. Please share it with your community. Hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't subscribed already and ring the little notification bell so you get notified when we have more videos to come. So for now, that's it. Do your gratitude journal, gratitude journal and I'll see you next time.